And Blockbuster for me became this kind of weirdly specific connection between Britain and America because when I arrived in Anderson, Indiana, there was a Blockbuster on Scatterfield Road. Yes, the same road that had Payless shoes. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those pertains to companies. Now, I believe I've mentioned this before, but I moved here at the height of the 2008 recession. So it was a period of immense change, not just for me personally, but for the world economy. And suddenly we're kind of 12 years on from that and I've been doing quite a bit of reflecting around this in the last few days, particularly because I was walking by the Hancock Center here in Chicago just the other day and I looked across the road to my left and I saw this building that's said Toys R Us Adventure, this new attraction for kids, and it got me thinking, what about all of those American businesses that were sort of a big part of my early days in America that have since closed? It's kind of weird because I didn't have the nostalgic connection to a lot of these companies that uh, you as perhaps an American might have had, though I did experience that of British companies because after I moved here I started seeing the likes of BHS, Mothercare, you know, all closed down, and that impacted me on a very deep level. Not so much Mothercare, I had no stake in that. But now that I take the time to reflect on the those early days of living in the United States, I do get a little bit sentimental. And that's because in the first few years of living here, I was still trying to figure out the United States. And a big part of doing so, I suppose, is knowing which companies to trust, where to get your groceries from. And a lot of those places, of course, survived and thrived throughout the recession and others did not. Whether it was down to poor internal administration, bad decision making, or, you know, decreasing sales, there were a number of companies that went defunct following the 2008 recession. Not necessarily because of the recession, but it could could not have helped and today I want to talk about five of them, particularly five, that played a big part in my early days of living here, beginning with this. Ah yes, pay less shoe source, or as people usually refer to it, pay less shoes. And when I first moved to the United States, I came here with nothing but a backpack on my bag and $15 in my hand. I mean, I was wearing clothes too, don't worry about that. I didn't come exactly prepared, I'll just say that. I mean, this was supposed to be a temporary move while we rode out the recession in Anderson, Indiana. So I just needed a pair of shoes to get me through that first winter. I was like a pilgrim at this point. And so I remember going to pay less shoes on Scatterfield Road in Anderson and just buying these sort of pair of winter shoes, I think, and they lasted about six weeks. I mean, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. Um, but that was good enough at least to get me through Christmas and beyond. And at that point, I just, I bought, I bought some sort of Wellingtons, I think. Because I just didn't know, I didn't know what else to do. I'd never seen a winter like it. And pay less shoes, I'm sorry, you didn't quite come through for me as I would have liked. And that's, that's actually why you went under. You failed Lawrence Brown. I say went under, Payless Shoe Source does still exist as a company, so it's a little bit of a bonus entry, but I have included it because in 2019, having filed for bankruptcy again, they did announce the closure of all their stores in the United States and Canada, so a bit of a loss. Honestly, I'm quite surprised that it lasted until the end of the decade. The same cannot be said of our next entry. I bloody miss Borders. It was my first real bookshop in the United States and I used to go there all the time in 2009 and then the stock started to diminish suddenly and we became aware that this might be a bit of a problem. I don't know when it was that we last went there but I used to go to the one in Noblesville, Indiana all the time if only to drink Seattle's Best coffee because they had a sort of partnership with Seattle's Best. I haven't had that since either. This one is kind of a nostalgia trip for me because Borders books sort of gave me the realisation that you can still purchase British books in America. You know, I was still going through that phase when I needed everything from back home. I've moved on from that phase now, although I do still go into Barnes & Noble for Doctor Who books. But I think the saddest thing about the borders closure is that you occasionally see the faded logo on the side of buildings. It's a memory of times gone by. It filed for bankruptcy in 2011 and all of its stores were closed later that year. And just like a game of dominoes, two years later the next company followed suit. That, that's a really long game of dominoes. Compact, do you remember them? No, but I do because after I moved here I needed to get a laptop computer. You know, how else was I going to stay in touch with people back home and, and become a blogger? Mainly that. Well, firstly, it turns out that I was able to borrow my wife's spare 
for four years and then it broke and then I had to get my own in about 2012 and in doing so I remember looking at some sort of compact related HP laptop that I was quite interested in and I almost went there. Glad I didn't because the year later compact went out of business. I mean it's hard enough to get parts for computers like chargers and things like that after the fact but if the company has hightailed it into oblivion then you're up slack alley. So I got an HP pavilion instead just ig ignore the stickers I was I was going through a phase. Speaking of phases here's one that I long ago grew out of. Yes, Toys R Us, the very company that prompted this video, but unlike the other entries on this list, I don't have any connection, nostalgic or otherwise, to Toys R Us. And that's because A, until recently I didn't have any nieces or nephews, and B, I haven't played with toys until I was, you know, 24. But I wanted to include this because firstly, Toys R Us was huge. So huge was it, in fact, that of course it made it all the way over to Britain, and you always saw a Toys R Us when you were just driving over the motorway, or just anywhere, basically. Now, as somebody who's never had children, or at least one whose needs aren't met by PetSmart, I can imagine there's a lot of parents watching this who have and who have a deep nostalgia for the place, or a hatred for it. I mean, I'm not going to pass judgement. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Toys R Us and whether you miss it. Personally, there's no company on this list that I miss more than our final entry. Yep, yeah, Blockbuster, we all remember it, at least those of us over the age of 18. And it has a deep connection to my move to the United States, because in the months just before moving to the United States, I lived in London with the wife, and, you know, just around the corner from where we lived was a Blockbuster, and it was one of these things we'd do every weekend, just go and get a DVD. And Blockbuster, for me, became this kind of weirdly specific connection between Britain and America, because when I arrived in Anderson, Indiana, there was a Blockbuster on Scatterfield Road. Yes, the same road that had Payless shoes. And that tradition of renting DVDs every single weekend continued until, until we discovered Netflix. Netflix is basically what killed Blockbuster. That and bad management. The same bad management that allowed me to keep this for 12 years. This is a copy of Secretary. The company, of course, filed for bankruptcy in 2010, and as of 2014, all but just a handful of stores in the US had fully closed. And to this day, there's only one remaining store in the entire world, and it's in Bend, Oregon. A big part of me just wants to go there and relive the glory days by renting the 2009 Robert De Niro vehicle. Everybody's fine. Everybody except Blockbuster. That's it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know which companies you miss, whether that's in the United States, Britain, or elsewhere. Please subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't go defunct. And if you would like to keep up with me on a day-to-day -day basis, why not follow me on Twitter by going to at LostInThePondUS. A big shout out to all my patrons who make these videos possible. Without you, I couldn't do any of it from the lighting equipment to the technology to everything else and in between. If you would like to become a patron, please do so today at patreon.com slash LostInThePond. That's it. Have a nice day and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And if you would like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.